This React roadmap will cover everything you might need to know if you're planning on learning React. As a React developer, I've used many of these tools personally, and I'm just going to go through this whole roadmap to give you a brief introduction to some of the things you might be working with. If you haven't heard of me before, I'm Adrian from Australia. I do videos around design and development, so if you haven't already, hit like and subscribe and we're just going to jump straight into it. React, just like any other framework, requires you to have some fundamentals under your belt before you get started. This, like most, includes HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are the building blocks of most things on the web, and this is why it's so often emphasized to know these. In terms of HTML, it's just knowing your tags and how to implement them. Some basic CSS is also useful so that you can style your page. This includes things like understanding how grids and flexbox works, as well as being able to do responsive design. For JS, a good understanding of how the syntax works is useful, as well as how DOM manipulation works. We'll be doing some ES6 in there, which is also useful, and having a bit of understanding of how jQuery works, as well is useful if you're trying to do some React stuff, because we will be building counterparts for what jQuery might have equivalents for. As we understand these foundations, a general understanding of web development is also useful. This is stuff like understanding how version control works through Git. So being able to use GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLabs is also being able to also do Git fetch and merges and making sure that you're properly committing is quite an important thing to be able to do because most React applications aren't built overnight and there's a lot of people often working at the same time on one application. So version control is very useful to know. Understanding how HTTP and HTTPS works is also a good thing to be able to do. We'll be working with a lot of APIs and APIs have things like get requests and push requests and posts as well. And these are things that we, if we have a good understanding of, we can start implementing straight away. Also being able to search for problems and solutions is a thing that I cannot understate how important it is simply because I've always had to jump on Stack Overflow or other websites just to figure out problems I might be having in React or just figure out different solutions. As we go down this chain, we also have terminal usage. Create React app is often built through terminal as well as other things that we might need to implement. We'll be running package managers and lots of other stuff and all of these are managed through the terminal. So this is why you do need to have an understanding of how the terminal works. We'll also be building stores and doing stuff with them. So understanding data structures, algorithms, and some design patterns is also useful. After we have this basic knowledge, we can move on to learning React, which is the fun part. Now, the first thing we're going to do when we jump into React is have a good understanding of build tools. With build tools, there are things like package managers and task runners. For package managers, this is where we start installing modules for our React. We can do this through NPN or Yarn or other ones as well. And then Create React App and some other stuff works on Webpack. We can use the Create React App one for that, or we can build our own, so having a bit of understanding of Webpack is also useful. And finally, running up tasks. So say if you wanted to eject our application or add in extra stuff and functionality in there, having an understanding of how NPM scripts work is also useful, as well as Gulp if you want to do some, say, CSS processing. And this is where we move on to our next part of React, which is understanding how styling works. Styling is just using your CSS in different ways, and there's a few different things we can do for that. A CSS processor is things like SAS and LESS and Stylus and PostCSS, which essentially make our CSS easier to write. Having a good understanding of this will just make it easier for you to style and it'll take you less time. Also utilizing a CSS framework can do the same thing. So for example, you might want to implement Bootstrap or Material UI into your React application. And this is why this isn't an essential thing to know, but it's just useful if you're building an application. Having a bit of understanding of how CSS architecture and naming conventions work as well is quite useful because you might be implementing them in your Create React app. Finally, there's CSS in JS. And this is really useful in the sense that there are a few libraries out there which make it a little bit easier to do styling. Things like styled components and emotion and being able to implement dark theme and light theme through them just makes life a lot easier. 
sometimes having all your content in one place is quite useful because you already have your HTML in your JS and having your CSS in there just makes life easier. Now that we've had a look at styling, we can move on to the next step here, which is the state management. There's a few different ways we can do this now in React, especially in React 17. We can use component state and context throughout the whole application if we wanted to, but after a while that could get messy. There's also Redux, which is really popular. There's lots of options through Redux where we can do async actions, and there's libraries we can add on top to make life easier as well as helpers too. And there's MobX, which is a personal favorite of mine. Very similar to Redux, but it's a little bit easier to do your state management in there. The next thing we've got here is type checkers. And type checkers essentially allow the application to pre-check how we're doing different types of things, such as variables and passing props in. So we've got prop types, type scripts, and flow that essentially make this a lot easier. We don't essentially have to use it, but it will cause us to have less problems, less errors, and less issues to fix up in the future if we use, use them from the start. The next thing we have here is form helpers. Now, personally, I've done most of my forms from scratch, but if you want to use a form helper, it just makes the context of creating a form much easier, and it can connect straight into Redux, for example, or other forms that can be done through here. But this is just something that is an, not necessarily required, but just something a little bit easier to do your React application with. We do have routing. Now, routing is a really important thing when you're building your application because you will have lots of different pages and lots of different content. There's a few different options to be able to learn from here. There is React Router, which is the most popular option, and React Router DOM, React Router um, has been around for so many versions now. I think it's up to version 5 or something like that. They've also got React Router Reach, or Reach Router, I think it's called, and this is a new one, which is definitely worth checking out if you have a chance. There's a few other ones out there, which it really depends on what you like to use. After that, we have API clients. API clients will allow us to connect our application to, say, maybe an API. So if we're using REST, we can use something like Axios or SuperAgent or Fetch, which is already native as part of React. But having a good understanding of how they work makes it easier to use your application. GraphQL is also something new that makes it easier to do your APIs, moving some of that backend stuff onto the front end. So we have things like Apollo and Relay that help us be able to do that. Moving on, we have utility libraries. These are things that make it easier to do functionality inside of our application. For example, if we have arrays and objects that we need sorting or doing different modifications to, we have Lodash. If we're doing things with time and date, we've got moment here. And there's also a few other ones we can look at here, but it's really depending on what you're trying to do in your application. We also have testing, which I cannot understate how important it is. There's a few different unit testing options here like Jest or Enzyme or Mocha, but uh, it's really up to you when you want to utilize. We also have integration testing and E2E testing, and both of these are something that you don't essentially have to do, but it's worth checking out if you want your application just to be properly tested before you push it out to production. Finally, we have a few not so important, but worth knowing things. Things like server-side rendering. If we build out a React application, all of it will be inside of one div called root as the ID. And sometimes this doesn't work very well for SEO. So being able to do server-side rendering means we build out the actual content of the React application on the server and then serve it up to the client. This is way better for SEO and things like Next.js do this. Then we've got things like mobile. Now for React, we have React Native as well as Corvoto that do this. And if you're building out React and learning it more, this is somewhere you can move into. Of course, there is other things as well, such as the desktop version of Electron, which we can put React on, or we have virtual reality here with React 360. Of course, I have never used this, but it does look pretty cool. Now, this concludes most of the roadmap here for React. There is quite a few things to go through, but as you use React on a daily basis over a few years, you'll be able to go through each one of these and learn them quite well. 
I've personally used all of this and I'd say the most important things here are just knowing your HTML, CSS and JavaScript because this is where most of the work will be done. And after that, you'll just be doing JavaScript functions and functionality in there that'll make your application work the way you want. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this developer roadmap. I've done another roadmap for a full stack developer, which I'll link in the description below as maybe I'll also put it up here somewhere in the video. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.